What's going on guys? We're back with more codex and we're going to start on the property section with exercise one. Um, this is actually exercise six. I thought it was going to be one, but it's six. CSS colors. One of the hallmarks of building a web page is styling it with colors. In CSS, colors can be used for a lot of things, from highlighting text to applying cool backgrounds. To add color to text, we use the color property. One of the most common ways to assign colors in CSS is by naming them with English words. So paragraph color red. Browsers usually support 140 color, color names as listed in this page. RGB. Besides setting colors by name, there are other ways to customize colors. RGB, perhaps the most popular one, represents the intensity of the redness, greenness, and blueness of the colors that we assign to a given element. The RGB function accepts three integers ranging from 0 to 255. 0 has no intensity and 255 has a maximum intensity and is assigned to the color property. This can alternatively be expressed with hexadecimals that begin with a hashtag, followed by a combination of numbers and letters. The letters and hexadecimals can either be lowercase or uppercase. While mixing cases is possible, we strongly recommend using either all lowercase or all uppercase in your hexadecimals. Let's use what we learned so far by working with the colors of the rainbow. First, copy and paste this into the index file. And let's run it so far. All right. Next, inside the body, populate. Oh, wait. All right, inside the body, populate each H2 heading with your top three favorite rainbow colors. So first color is going to be uh, um, let's do in uh, violets. Then let's do indigo and then uh, blue. All right, here we go. Then in a separate style CSS, we're going to set up the following rules. Hashtag first color, and then color um, violet. Is that what we're trying to do? Yeah, okay. I was just making sure we weren't like trying to change the background or something. Second color. Um, and third color. Blue. Okay, lastly replace each comment with a color followed by a colon, then the color of your choice. Use at least one named color, one RGB, and one hexadecimal. So um, I guess we're going to have to go here. Um, and pick one we can do. So I'm just going to do this one. For blue. So the blue one I'm going to swap out with this and it's still blue. Alright and then We need one RGB, so I guess I'll do indigo as that one RGB, and I'm gonna have to figure out um, indigo color picker. So that would be this one. All right. And it's
it's still indigo. All right, let's go ahead and complete that one and move on to the next one. Measurements, sizing and CSS. Most HTML elements have a default size, including a height and a width. However, we can use CSS to change their sizes. Two of the most common sizing properties in CSS are width and height properties. For example, the image element has a default width and height. I'm going to run that to clear that. Um, set to the original size of the image. As you can tell, the rendered image of our favorite bot character is 200 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall by default. But this can be changed in CSS by selecting the image and setting our own width properties. This is what our image looks like now. Our image is now taller than it is wide. Absolute versus relative units. The kind of measurements we can give to an element's properties can be split into two groups, absolute units and relative units. Absolute units are usually expressed as numbers with or without a decimal. They are fixed and do not change in size according to the size of its direct parent element. Pixels are the most commonly used ones. Other options include points and centimeters. Be mindful of setting the height of a given element with absolute units as it may cause the con content to overflow outside the boundaries of its parent element. If we set an element's property with relative units, it will change if the size of something else changes, like its parent element or the computer screen itself. They're often expressed as percentages, but other frequently used relative units include EM, measurements that are associated with the font size of either the parent element when applying font size, more on that in the next challenge, or the element itself when setting the width. Rem measurements that are associated with the font size of the root HTML element 16 points by default. Uses, uses for the M may include setting a page's text to change according to how a user sets the text size for their browser. For a rim, this could be used to set the baseline text size for their site. Let's try resizing. First, we got to copy this and paste that here and let's see what it pops up. Okay, so we got two soccer balls. Now let's open a style CSS. The soccer ball images that we're using are both 720 pixels wide and 720 pixels tall by default. Select the first image by its ID, hashtag absolute, and we're gonna set its width to 100 pixels. So we see that one went way down. Next, we're going to select the relative and we're going to set its width to 50%. Okay, so that took it 50% of what it was. So like if we change this to 80%, it's going to get bigger. And if we change it to 200%, it's going to get even bigger. So let's change it back to as 50%. All right, and we're done with that one. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here, but I do want to thank you for hanging out, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.